Reversion and Renewal in All Human Areas The Third Testament, Revelations of Jesus Christ, Chapter 57 New and more profound knowledge. Thus saith the Lord. Time draws near in which the spiritual revelations will disclosure to mankind the shining path to reach and know the mysteries which are concealed in the bosom of creation. The light of my spirit will reveal to you the manner of obtaining the true science which will permit man to be recognized and obeyed by the creatures that surround you and by the elements of creation, thus fulfilling in this way my will that man would be lord on the earth. But that will take place when the spirit of man, illuminated by its conscience, will exercise its power and its light over the weaknesses of the flesh. The day when men will understand the importance of the spirit is near, for many men, believing, do not believe, and others seeing, do not see. Yet when they touch the truth, they will recognize that it would be childish unfair and senseless to continue sustaining a being that belongs to another life with the fruits of this world. Then they shall seek the light in their religions and in their anguish and anxiety to find the truth. They shall go about abolishing what is false in their doctrines and destroying all that is superficial and external in their various cults until they discover the divine essence. Mankind will certainly get tired of sowing hatred, violence, and egotism. Each seed of hatred that they sow will multiply against them in such a way that their strength will not be enough to gather its harvest. This result, unforeseen and superior to their human power, will detain them in their frenzied and senseless journey. Afterward, I will perform a miracle in each heart by allowing charity to emanate where there was only egotism. Men will again attribute to themselves all perfection, knowledge, and justice. They will remember that Jesus said, The leaf of a tree does not move without the Father's will, because today, according to the feeling of the world, the leaf of a tree, all beings, and the stars move by chance. When my voice is heard by humanity in spiritual form, men shall feel the vibration of something that has always been inside them, but without the power to freely manifest itself. It will be the spirit, animated by the voice of its Lord, that rises up to answer my call. Then a new era shall begin on earth, for you shall cease to see life from below, and begin to see it, to know, and enjoy it from the heights of your spiritual elevation. When it is no longer the mind that leads, the spirit is observing or understanding science, but the spirit that elevates and guides the mind, when it will discover things that are unfathomable to them now, but which are in fact destined to be revealed when men have spiritualized their intelligence. I have told you that the moment will come when the light shall shine from everywhere, in all lands and all continents. That light will shine according to the spiritual preparation of man, and through it a new and more accurate idea of creation will be formed, a new stage of spiritual evolution. When men come to think universally of love, each person will then try to perfect themselves, to comply and to serve others better. All fear of punishment will be unnecessary. Man will not comply from fear, but from conviction. It is then that humanity will have evolved spiritually and in his intelligence. When my seed has sprouted in the hearts of the people that make up humanity, the life of every human will undergo a complete change. How big the change will be, which they will show in their human life, as well as their spiritual worship towards God. When you compare the state of living, believing, worshipping, fighting, and thinking of the humans from earlier times with the ones who live spiritualism. From that time of fanaticism, idolatry, materialization, and absurd faith dogmas, no stone will remain atop the other. All errors that your ancestors and you yourselves will bequeath to the following generations will be removed. 
everything that does not carry any essence of good and truth within itself will not persist. But everything good that you inherited, they will preserve. That doctrine, expounded in a more spiritual form than in past times, shall have to struggle between men, peoples, religions and sects to open a passageway and establish itself. Yet when the time of confusion has passed, the peace shall come to men, and they will enjoy finding in my word the contents it has always held. The concept of my divinity, of the spiritual life and of the purpose of your existence shall begin to follow the true path, for each man shall be a good interpreter and what has been told him in parable and in a figurative sense by your master and by his envoys and prophets. That language was understood only in part by men. It was the lesson assigned to them according to their mental and spiritual capacity. But they, wishing to know all, became confused, giving it material interpretations to what can only be analyzed in spiritual form. Instruction through human envoys of God I have promised to send the great spirits of light to live among you. They await only the moment to come to earth to be made flesh and fulfill a great mission of restoration. What will you need to teach these beings when they come to inhabit this world? Nothing, truly I tell you, for they shall come to teach, not to learn. You shall marvel to hear them speaking even in childhood of profound teachings, sustaining conversations with the men of science and the theologians, startling the aged with their experience, and counseling the children and the young toward the good path. Blessed shall be the home that receives one of these spirits in its bosom, and how grave shall be the charges against those who try to impede the fulfillment of the missions of my envoys. I tell you again that there shall be no lack in the world of men bearing great light to illuminate your path and sow your lives with love. Humanity has always had the presence of these men on earth and the time nears when great legions of these spirits of great light come to the earth to destroy the false world you have created and to erect a new one where men breathe peace and truth reigns. They shall suffer greatly caused by the evil of men, but that will be nothing new, for none of the envoys of God has escaped persecution, mockery and offenses. They shall have to come to the world and dwell in it for their presence is necessary on earth. They shall come calling with love to the heart of humanity. Their word, impregnated with the justice of the Father, shall touch the pride and arrogance of all who have exchanged the vestments of humility of the Spirit, for the robes of vanity, pride, false power and false greatness. Those shall be the first to stand pointing with a finger, trembling from rage at my envoys. But this shall mean merely that in each trial to which my envoys are submitted, these can give great testimony of the truth they have brought to the world. You do not now know in what walks of human life they will appear, but I tell you that some shall appear in the bosom of great religions. They will struggle for the unification and spiritual harmony of all men. Others shall arise from among the men of science to show with the fruit of their inspirations that the true purpose of science is the spiritual perfection of man and not his misery and destruction. And so, in every walk of life, my servants shall appear bearing my law in their hearts and testifying in word and deed to what I have come to speak to you of in this era. The Metamorphosis of Human Beings I am prophesying a new world for you, and a humanity made spiritual, and again when this word is known, it will not be believed. Generations and generations shall pass, the arrogance of men shall unleash tempests and floods, pests and plagues, and the cry of humanity shall move the heavens. Yet after all this, the new inhabitants shall begin a life of reflection and spirituality, making use of the immense body of experience that past generations have left to them, 
and the divine seed shall begin to germinate. In each spirit exists a germ of the divine, for it sprang from me, and just as your children inherit the looks or the characteristics of the parents, the spirits too shall, in the end, reveal that which they have inherited from their celestial father, which is love. After the new flood, the rainbow shall shine as a symbol of peace, and a new pact man will make spiritually with its lord. You should expect the struggle to be great, for all of you shall need to fight against the dragon of evil whose weapons are ambition, hatred, earthly power, lust, vanity, selfishness, lies, idolatry, and fanaticism, all being the forces of evil born of the human heart, and against which you must fight with great courage and faith until you have defeated them. When the dragon of your passions has been killed by your arms of light, a new world shall appear to men, a new world being the same one, but which shall seem more beautiful, for men will then know how to take it for their good and their progress, endowing each of their works with the ideal of spirituality. Hearts shall be ennobled, the minds shall have light, and the spirit will know how to manifest its presence. All that is good shall prosper, and all that is elevated shall serve as the seed for human works. Man has descended deep into an abyss, and even to there the conscience has accompanied him, waiting for the propitious moment to be heard. Soon that voice shall be heard in the world with such great a force that you cannot imagine now. But it will make mankind come out of their abyss of pride materialism and sin, to be cleansed in the waters of repentance and begin to elevate themselves toward the path of spirituality. I will help all my children, because I am the resurrection and the life who comes to lift the dead from their tombs. In this existence that I now come to offer mankind, men will abide by my will, renouncing their freedom of will through love persuaded by the fact that he who abides by the will of the Father is not a servant nor a slave, but a true Son of God. Then you will know a true happiness and a perfect peace, which are the fruit of love and wisdom. I tell you that in this, the third era, though it seems impossible to you, the regeneration and salvation of humanity shall not be difficult, for the task of redemption is a divine work. My love shall be that which returns men to the road of light and truth. My love subtly entering each heart, caressing each spirit, manifesting itself through each conscience, shall transform the hardest rocks into sensitive hearts. It shall make spiritualized beings of materialistic men, and of hard sinners men of righteousness, peace and goodwill. I speak to you in this way because none know better than I the evolution of your spirits, and humanity, in spite of its great materialism, its love for the world, and its passions developed to the greatest depths of sin, only in appearance lives clinging to the flesh and material life. I know that when it feels in its spirit the affectionate touch of my love, it shall come to me ready to quit itself of its burden and follow me on the road of truth, that without realizing, it intensely wishes to travel. Be alert, and you shall be the witnesses of the conversation of those who have ignored me, just as you shall see the return of those who have parted from the path of truth. Men of science, who have dedicated their lives to seeking tools and strength for destruction, upon feeling their judgment approach, shall turn to the path of truth to consecrate their last days to the moral and material reconstruction of the world. Others who in their pride had tried to occupy my place among the spirits shall descend from their thrones to imitate me among humanity. And those men who at one time agitated among the people promoting wars shall come to see their errors and anxiously seek peace between men. When my light has penetrated all hearts, and the men who lead the peoples, 
those who teach, and all those who fulfill the most important missions. Let themselves be guided and inspired by the higher light, that is the conscience. Then, indeed, can you have hope for one another. Then can you have faith in your brothers. For my light will be in all, and in my light is my presence and the justice of my love. My teaching shall be heard again by humanity. However, it will not be because my law has returned to humanity. It has always been written in their consciences. It shall be because men have returned to the path of the law. This world shall be like the prodigal son of my parable, and like him, it shall find its father in his place, waiting to embrace him with love and seat him to sup at his table. The hour for the return of humanity to me has not yet come. They conserve yet a part of their inheritance, which they will have to squander in feasting and pleasures until they find themselves naked, hungry and sick before they can raise their gaze to the Father. It is necessary to concede to those men, ambitious for earthly things, some moments more for their dissolution to be complete so they may finally convince themselves that the gold, the power, the titles, and the pleasures of the flesh will never give them peace, or the well-being of the spirit. The hour of the examination of humanity in the light of the conscience approaches. There shall stand the wise, the theologians, the scientists, the powerful, the rich, and the judges, asking themselves with what spiritual moral or material fruit they have gathered, they can feed mankind. From that instant, many shall return to me, recognizing that in spite of the glory they had on earth, they lacked something to fill the emptiness in which their spirits, which can only be sustained with the fruits of the spiritual life, had fallen. From the men of today, lacking in spirituality and love, I shall make spring the generations often prophesied by my word. But first, I shall prepare these people who today ignore and who make war and destroy each other. And when the action of my justice has passed over all, and the weeds have been uprooted, a new humanity shall arise, no longer bearing the seeds of discord, hatred and envy in their blood. For the blood of their father's will have been purified in the crucible of pain and repentance. I shall receive them and tell them as I did in the second era. Ask, ask, and ye shall be given. Yet now I will add, know how to ask. Transformations and Revolutions in All Areas of Life The Material World the planet is not near to its disintegration, but the end of the world of sin and error, of darkness and bad science, shall come to an end with the light of my doctrine, and upon its ruins I shall raise up a new world of progress and peace. Great will be the change that mankind will suffer in a short while. Institutions, principles, beliefs, doctrines, customs, Laws and all orders of the human existence will be shaken from their very foundations. All men, races and nations will respond to the divine call. They will listen once the spirit of man becomes weary of being a prisoner on earth. The spirit will arise and break the chains of materialism in order to proclaim its spiritual freedom. The time will come when men will arise who truly love my law. Those who will know how to join the spiritual law with that of the world, the eternal power with the temporal. Yet it shall not be in order to enslave spirits, as in times past, but to show them the road to the light, which is the true liberty of the spirit. Then shall morality return to the bosom of the home. There shall be truth in the institutions and spirituality in your customs. It shall be the time in which the conscience makes its voice heard, and in which my children communicate from spirit to spirit with my divinity, where the races are joined. And all of this shall decide the disappearance of many differences and conflicts, because up until now, 
in spite of the small size of your world, you have not known how to live as a single family and have not been able to offer me unified worship. Ancient Babel condemned you to this division of the peoples and races, but the construction of my spiritual temple in the hearts of humanity shall free you from that restitution and bring you to love one another truly. A time will come when the desire of humanity for spiritual elevation shall be so fervent that they will dedicate every means at their disposal toward transforming this veil of tears into a world where harmony reigns, that will do even the impossible, making superhuman efforts and sacrifices to reject war. It will be those men that elevate this world, those who take from humanity their cup of bitterness, who rebuild all that previous generations have destroyed in their blind ambition, their materialism, and their senselessness. They shall be the ones who beware true worship for me, that worship which bears neither fanaticism nor outward or superfluous acts. They shall try to make humanity understand that the harmony between human and spiritual laws and their fulfillment is the best worship man can offer God. The time of rites, of bells and altars of bronze, shall now pass from humanity. Idolatry and religious fanaticism shall give their final signs of life, and the time of struggle and chaos that I have been announcing shall come. And when, after the storm, peace has returned to the spirits, men will no longer build palaces in my honor, nor shall the crowds be called with voices of bronze, nor shall the men who think themselves great hold their power over the multitudes. The time of humility, fraternity, and spirituality will come, bringing with it an equality of gifts for mankind. The Reaper is here in this era, bearing the mission of felling all the trees that do not bear good fruit. In that great struggle, only justice and truth will prevail. Many of the churches will vanish, though some will stand and some truth will shine forth in splendor, while others will offer only imposture. Yet the scythe of justice shall continue cutting until all of the seed that remains on earth is selected. This is the continuation of my lessons, but not the end of time as understood by men. The world will continue spinning in space. Spirits will continue to arrive on earth to be made flesh and fulfill their destinies and men will continue populating this planet. Only humanity's way of life will change. The transformations that human life undergoes shall be great, so much so that it will seem that the world has ended and another been born. That is what all of you walk toward, toward that life of serenity and peace, not toward the abyss or death as you currently forebode in your hearts. It is true that you must yet drink much bitterness before the time of your spirituality arrives, but it shall not be death, nor war, nor pestilence, nor hunger that halt the course of your lives or the spiritual evolution of this humanity. I am stronger than death, and so I will return your lives to you if you die, and make you return to earth whenever necessary. There is much yet to reveal to you, beloved humanity. There are yet many surprises in my arcane.